Apparently, there are lots of pixels in the works. There's the 7, the 7 Pro, and maybe a foldable. Let's talk about it. Keep this in mind that nothing is official. Google has not previewed anything as of yet. This video is based on the slew of reports out there right now. We should have time codes for the Pixel 7 Pro and the 7, so you can jump to those if you want, but we're gonna start with the foldable one since it's probably the most interesting. There have been reports about a foldable Pixel for a while. Way back in September of 2021, the ever-reliable Ev Blast tweeted this, heard from someone I trust that the foldable Pixel, codename Passport, retail branding, unknown, will indeed launch before the end of the year. Apparently, they've been working on this device for over two years, and if the P6 is any indication, it'll be worth a look. So that was 2021, and we obviously did not see the launch of a foldable Pixel, but wait, there's more. 9 to 5 Google found some information about another foldable Pixel with the code name Pippet. They found this out by digging into a build of Android 12L beta. Android 12L is focused on larger screened Android devices. There were a couple of animations that may give us an idea of what a foldable Google Pixel would look like. In one animation, you see what looks like a folded phone with a hinge on the left, screen on the front, buttons on the right, and a place to put your SIM card. There's a second animation showing what looks like the same device, but opened up. This time, there's a large inner screen. The buttons remain on the right. The SIM tray is centered on the left panel. 9 to 5 Google also did some measurements, and they figure the aspect ratio of the internal display is around 7 by 8. The shape of the device is drawn comparison to the Oppo Find N. That's a phone that's available only in China. You can see it's kind of a short and wide device, no matter whether it's opened or closed. When CNET's Eli Blumenthal tried out that device, he said... Then when he dragged his fingers across the 7.1 inch display, it felt like a regular tablet. The crease is not that noticeable when the N is open. Does that mean that the Pixel Foldable will be the same as the Oppo N? Not necessarily. However, if Google is entering the foldable phone market, it has some options when it comes to sourcing displays as that technology is maturing. Let's talk about specs. 9 to 5 Google had some reports on this. The foldable would be powered by Google's Tensor chip, the same one that's in the Pixel 6 series. That's a curiosity. You would think that the foldable would be powered by whatever's in the Pixel 7. 9 to 5 Google also had a report from late last year about the cameras on the foldable. In fact, that report was really, really detailed. It said that the foldable will not use the Pixel 6's 50 megapixel Samsung GN1 sensor. Instead, it will use a 12.2 megapixel Sony camera, which can be found on the Pixels 3 through 5a. So this new foldable Google phone has some interesting specs and attributes. It may have a squarish inner screen. It could be powered by the Pixel 6 Tensor. The cameras could be a bit of a downgrade from the 6 as well. Why is this? It could be about the pricing. 9 to 5 Google says that Google is aiming for a $1,400 price point. Now the 6 costs around $600. The Pro starts at around $900. The most expensive 6 Pro with a half a terabyte of storage tops out at around $1,100. So it would be a bit extra to get a foldable Google phone. If you look at the folding competition, the Samsung Z Flip 3 costs around $1,000. The Galaxy Z Fold 3 starts at just $1,800. The Google foldable would be in that middle spot. If the company makes some trade-offs, it seems possible to hit that $1,400 price point. When would we see this device? Well, a tweet by the CEO of Display Supply Chain Consultants, Ross Young, said it's back. Looks like Google's foldable Pixel will start panel production in Q3 2022 and launch in Q4 2022. Well, that's a pretty safe bet. The Pixel launches are usually in October, which is in the fourth quarter. Young also tweeted that the Pixel 7 will shrink from 6.4 inches to 6.3. The Pixel 7 Pro will stick to 6.7 inches. So let's talk about that Pixel 7 Pro. OnLeaks tweeted this out. Here comes your very first and very early look at the Google Pixel 7 Pro. He included a link to smartpre.com, which had a lot of renders and a Pixel 7 Pro 360 degree view. Remember, these images are not official. However, accurate Pixel hardware information seems to leak out every year and OnLeaks is pretty reliable. I'll run down some specs while we show you some of the renders. This report says that the Pixel 7 Pro would have a 6.7 or 6.8 inch screen. There would be a single punch hole front facing camera. The OLED panel would have a refresh rate that will quote, 
challenge Samsung's current flagship, the S22 Ultra. For comparison, the S22 Ultra has a variable refresh rate. Samsung claims that the S22 Ultra can go from 120 hertz all the way down to one hertz. The Pixel 6 Pro also has a dynamic 120 hertz refresh rate that can drop down to 10 hertz. The idea behind these dynamic rates is so your phone can save on battery life. If it does not have to show you something at a super high frame rate all the time, you'll get more time on your phone. The camera belt on the back of the 7 Pro could be merged with the frame. That camera belt would have three cameras, a primary wide angle camera, a periscope telephoto camera, and probably an ultra wide camera. Rounding out things are stereo speakers and a USB-C port. Well, what about the Pixel 7? Don't you worry, OnLeaks also tweeted out renders of what he says is the Pixel 7. Guess what? It looks similar to the Pixel 6 and a bit like the Pixel 7 Pro renders. Let's go straight to that camera belt. It's more integrated into the overall body of the device like the 7 Pro. The belt would stick with two cameras, not three like the Pro. The screen size would be in the neighborhood of 6.2 inches to 6.4 inches. The report over at carhp.com did not have any information about the refresh rate on the 7. However, that same report did mention some news on the Pixel 7 storage. There'd be 128 gig, 256 gig, and a new 512 gig version. More storage is always good. Okay, so that was a lot of information. We're gonna break some of this down and please let me know what you think of these phones in the comments. I think a foldable Pixel seems like a good idea, mostly because the idea of a foldable phone is no longer brand new. Google gets to leverage data from other manufacturers like Oppo, Motorola, and most importantly, Samsung. And it's not like Google will just learn from Samsung's public dealings. It could get insight directly from the company. Samsung and Google have gotten very tight over the past few years. Samsung worked with Google to make Wear OS better and maybe a real alternative to the Apple Watch. Then there's Samsung's foldable phones. The Galaxy Fold has been around for three years. The first one was a bit clunky and that internal camera cutout was a bit funky, but what a marvel of engineering. Tons of cameras, a screen to use when the device is closed, and another huge flexible display on the inside. Through the years, Samsung has revised the Fold into a much more sleek product after getting feedback. Samsung and competitors seem to think there is a real market for foldable Android tablets as long as they have a regular phone attached. Google got on board with all of this in October of 2021 with the introduction of Android 12L. When it comes to Android and tablets, it's been, I'll say it, a mess. Android's initial foray into tablets was all messed up because Android is inherently different than the Apple model. Developers had to make apps that ran on all kinds of screen sizes because there were so many different kinds of Android phones. Then Android phones got bigger, essentially making Android tablets kind of irrelevant. In June 2019, Google hardware head Rick Oslo tweeted that Google's own hardware team would focus on building laptops, but that the company would remain committed to its tablet partners. That's right, Google gave up on making its own Android tablets after years of trying. Devices like the Galaxy Z Fold 3 along with Android 12L show that Android on tablet-sized screens is far from dead. A foldable Pixel would not be breaking any new ground, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with a well-built, well-supported piece of hardware that runs a version of Android without the dressing that some other companies put on their phones. Competition in this space is good. If Google is aiming for that $1,400 price point, I think that's a good idea too. The company doesn't have to make the best foldable in the world. A really good one is fine. Google's best stuff is still in software and services. As long as that stuff runs well on a Pixel foldable, a lot of people will be satisfied. As for the Pixel 7s, I, I think the designs are quite fine. They may not be a huge departure from the 6 series, but that's okay. The 6 and the 6 Pro, they have premium looks and a distinctive camera bumps. I still think that camera bumps are silly. Make a fatter phone with a bigger battery and more storage, you cowards. Anyway, the camera belts on the Pixels give those phones a sense of identity. And on the practical side, that bar means when you place the Pixel 6 on a desk, it won't wobble when you touch the screen. I am really curious about what advances are coming to the next generation of Tensor processors. The first generation offered some impressive offline abilities like speech recognition, more stuff was being done on the actual phone without data having to go back and forth to the cloud. 
We'll have to wait and see what shows up later this year. If you're curious about the future of Android, check out this video showing off what the next version will be like. Google's Developers Conference is also coming up soon. We'll have coverage here. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. I'm Ayaz Akhtar, and I will see you online.